Hi, I'm Sarah, a dedicated professional with a passion for balancing my career and personal life. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe for more insights into my journey. Today, I'll share how my dream marriage began to unravel under the weight of external pressures. It all started so perfectly. Tom and I were the epitome of a happy couple, freshly married with dreams of a balanced, loving life together. We supported each other in everything, from Tom's new business ventures to my rising career. Life felt like a harmonious blend of love and ambition. You know, Sarah, I always admire how you manage everything so well, Tom would say as we enjoyed our quiet evenings together after a long day. I couldn't do it without your support, Tom. We're in this together, I'd respond, feeling grateful and content. But this balance began to tip when Karen, Tom's mother, started dropping by more frequently. Initially, it was subtle. Just a few comments here and there. You're always working, Sarah. Don't you think Tom needs more of your time? Karen would ask, her tone laced with concern that felt more like criticism. I tried to brush it off with a smile. I make sure Tom and I have quality time, Karen. It's all about balance, right? Yet as days turned into weeks, Karen's visits became more about inspecting our life rather than enjoying our company. One evening, as Tom and I were planning a weekend getaway, Karen dropped in unannounced, her expression stormy. A getaway? With the amount of time Sarah spends at work, I'm surprised you two don't just meet at the airport, Karen joked, though her eyes didn't smile. Mom, come on. We've been looking forward to this, Tom countered trying to keep the mood light, but I could see the seeds of doubt planting in his mind, watered by his mother's insinuations. Over dinner that night, Karen's words became more direct. I just think, Tom, that if Sarah loved you as much as she loves her job, maybe she'd consider a less demanding role. Marriage is about sacrifices, after all. Tom looked at me, searching for reassurance. I reached for his hand, squeezing it gently. My job doesn't stop me from loving you, Tom. I'm here, aren't I? But Karen's influence was relentless. It's not about now, Sarah. It's about the future. What when children come along? How will you manage then if you can't even balance it now? As Karen continued her crusade over the following weeks, I watched as Tom's demeanor changed. The light-hearted, supportive husband began to echo his mother's concerns. Maybe my mom has a point, Sarah. Are we really okay like this? Is your job going to keep taking up so much of your time? I felt cornered, my dreams of a happy marriage turning into a battleground over my career choices. Despite my efforts to maintain our harmony, Karen's words had sown deep roots of discontent, making me wonder how long before our love would be another casualty of her interference. Each day, as I left for work, I could feel the growing strain. The shared smiles were fewer, and the questions about my commitment to our marriage grew more frequent. It was clear. Karen was not just a meddling mother-in-law. She was a force that was starting to dictate the terms of my marriage, pushing me into a corner I never anticipated when I said, I do. Sarah, we need to talk. It's about us, about your job. It's taking over our lives. I was just at work, Tom. We've discussed this. My job is important, but so are we. But that's just it. It doesn't feel like we're important anymore. Not like your job is. Tom, who's been talking to you? This isn't like you. It's not just talking, Sarah. It's seeing, feeling neglected. Mom pointed out how late you've been coming home, how many weekends you've spent working. It's like you're choosing your career over us. Karen's been filling your head with nonsense. Yes, I work late sometimes. But I'm here now, aren't I? I'm always here when it really matters. But that's just it, isn't it? Only when it really matters? What about the everyday moments? Karen says a marriage needs more than just the big moments. It needs all the little ones, too. And since when did Karen become our marriage counselor? Tom, think about what you're saying. You know how hard I've worked for my career. We talked about this before we got married. Sarah, maybe we were naive. Maybe we didn't really understand what it would take. Karen showed me articles about couples like us. Couples where the job takes over. Most of them don't make it unless something changes. You're quoting articles to me now? And from Karen? This isn't like you, Tom. Maybe I wasn't seeing things clearly before. Maybe I didn't want to admit that Karen could be right. But Sarah, I'm feeling left out in your life. And it hurts. It really hurts. I can't believe this. You're actually considering your mother's manipulations over our relationship? 
over everything we've built together? It's not just mom's word, Sarah. It's how I feel. Can't you see that? Your job? It's like there's always something more important than coming home. This is unbelievable. You know how much I love you, Tom. But I also love my job. I shouldn't have to choose. But maybe you do, Sarah. Maybe it's time to decide what's really important. Because I can't keep feeling like this. Like I'm second place in your life. You know what, Tom? Maybe it's not just my job. Maybe it's your insecurity, fueled by your mother. You need to figure out what you want, Tom, without Karen whispering in your ear. This isn't just about Mom, Sarah. This is about us. If you can't see that, maybe there's nothing left to discuss. As I watched Tom storm out of the room, I felt a chill. The man I loved was slipping away, puppeteered by the masterful strings of Karen. The foundation we built, now shaking under the weight of orchestrated doubts, left me wondering if the life we dreamed of was just that. A dream, too fragile for the harsh light of manipulative realities. Tom, we need a real conversation. I've been adjusting my schedule, coming home earlier. Haven't you noticed the changes? I see you're trying, Sarah, but it's just not enough. Mom says a few days don't change weeks of neglect. Your mom again? Tom, this is our marriage. Why is Karen dictating how we feel? She's not dictating, she's observing. She cares about us, Sarah. And I don't? Is that what you're saying? Because I work to support us both? That means I don't care? It's not about money, Sarah. It's about presence. Being here. Being together. I am here, Tom. Look at me. I'm right here, fighting for us. But it feels like you're fighting for your job more. The tension hung thick between us as Tom paced back and forth, his frustration palpable. I could see the struggle in his eyes, torn between his mother's influence and the remnants of our love. Tom, please, let's not let your mom ruin what we've built. We can get past this. It's not just about mom anymore, Sarah. It's about how I feel. I feel alone in this marriage. Alone. After everything we've promised each other. You're not alone, Tom. I'm right here. But you're not, Sarah. Not when I wake up at night and you're still at work. Not when I go to events alone because you're too busy. Mom's right. Maybe we were too hasty getting married. I can't believe you're letting her words wedge between us like this. You're talking about being hasty? Tom, we loved each other enough to make those vows. Remember? Before Tom could respond, the doorbell rang. He walked over and returned with an envelope, his hands trembling as he handed it to me. I can't do this anymore, Sarah. I'm sorry. Tearing open the envelope, my heart sank as I stared at the divorce papers. The cold, formal document felt like a slap, each word a confirmation of Karen's victory over our marriage. This, this is it then? You're letting her win? It's not about winning or losing, Sarah. It's about feeling valued, and I just don't feel that with you anymore. As Tom left the room, the finality of the situation settled in. Despite my efforts, Karen's manipulation had poisoned the well of our love leaving only bitterness. I was left staring at the remnants of our dream, now just a stack of papers on the table, a stark symbol of how deeply deceit could cut, severing the bonds I thought were unbreakable. As the weeks morphed into months, my career flourished in the wake of the divorce. The solitude, once suffocating, transformed into a sanctuary of productivity and self-discovery. My achievements stacked up, each one a testament to my resilience, a triumph from the ruins of my personal life. Meanwhile, Tom's world began to unravel. The narrative Karen had woven, a tapestry of deceit, started to fray at the edges. Mom, something doesn't add up. You said Sarah was at a conference last month, but her company posted photos of the event this weekend. How do you explain that? Tom, darling, maybe they posted it late. You know how these corporate things work? But doubt had already seeded in Tom's mind prompting him to dig deeper. He started checking the past emails and messages Karen had shown him, only to find glaring inconsistencies. The final straw was when he discovered a photoshopped email, supposedly from me, prioritizing work over an anniversary we never celebrated. Mom, why? Why did you lie to me about Sarah? Tom, I did it for you. She was taking you away from us, from your family. I had to show you the truth. That wasn't the truth, Mom. You manipulated everything, how could you? The confrontation left Tom shattered, grappling with the realization that his mother's protection was a smokescreen for control. 
He sought me out, finding me at a book signing for my latest professional achievement. Sarah, can we talk? I've made a terrible mistake. I looked up, the past emotions swirling with the present. Tom, it's been a while. What's on your mind? I found out the truth. My mom. She lied about everything, Sarah. I'm so sorry. His words, laden with regret, couldn't rewind time. Tom, it's a lot to process. You believed her over your wife. Why? I thought she had my best interest at heart. I see now I was wrong. So wrong. Sarah, is there any way we can start over? The weight of his plea hung between us, heavy and complex. Tom, I've moved on. I can't go back to what was. Sarah, I understand. I just... I hope you can forgive me someday. As Tom walked away, the mix of emotions was overwhelming. Victory in my professional life contrasted sharply with the bittersweet resolution of my personal turmoil. Tom's regret was a cold comfort, a hollow remedy to the wounds inflicted not just by a manipulative mother, but by a husband who failed to see through the facade. The chapter closed on what was, opening another to what could be, a future built on my terms, defined not by deceit, but by undeniable self-worth. Life after Tom unfolded in unexpected ways. I delved deeper into my work, my achievements reflecting a newfound strength and clarity. With each accolade and successful project, I felt more anchored in my own identity, far removed from the doubts that once shadowed my marriage. At a conference where I was the keynote speaker, I shared insights on personal and professional growth, weaving in subtle hints of my past struggles. In life and career, setting boundaries is crucial. It's not just about saying no to what you don't want, but about saying yes to what truly matters to you. The applause was affirming, the faces in the crowd not just admiring my professional insights, but resonating with the personal undertones of my journey. Meanwhile, Tom was learning his own hard lessons. His relationship with Karen had strained to breaking points. He confronted the harsh reality of his misplaced trust and the autonomy he had surrendered. I trusted you, Mom, to guide me, but you led me astray with your own fears. Tom, I was just trying to keep you close. I didn't want to lose you to her world. But it wasn't your choice to make, Mom. I lost more than just a wife. I lost my way. Back in my world, as I penned my experiences for an upcoming book, the catharsis was palpable. Reflecting on the past, I realized that every heartache had sculpted me into a more resilient individual capable of navigating both personal and professional realms with equal prowess. One evening, while reviewing the draft of my book, a message from Tom popped up. His words, filled with remorse and a plea for understanding, no longer stirred the chaos they once would have. Sarah, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I'm sorry for everything. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. I pondered over the right words to reply, knowing that forgiveness was a bridge I was ready to cross. Not for his sake, but for my own peace. Tom, I forgive you. It's important for both of us to move forward, separately. Take care. Sending it felt like closing a book long overdue. The finality was not about ending our saga with bitterness, but about embracing the growth that came from it. Standing before another audience, sharing my story, the message resonated stronger each time. Embrace your challenges, I urged. They are not just obstacles— but stepping stones to a greater self. Tom's journey diverged from mine, each of us navigating the aftermath of choices shaped under influence and manipulation. As I carved a path defined by independence and newfound self-assurance, I knew this wasn't just a new chapter, but an entirely new book in my life story. And that brings us to the end of Sarah's journey of resilience and self-discovery. But before you go, I have a question that I'd love to hear your thoughts on. Do you think it's ever justifiable for family members to intervene in one's personal relationship if they believe it's for the best, even if it involves manipulation? Share your opinions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this story and the discussion it brings, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more thought-provoking content. Your support helps us continue to bring these stories to life. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see your responses.